So that's what the whole E equals MC square equation is. In physics it tells us how much energy is hidden in all the solid stuff around us. You just got to know how to get it out. Okay, we're going to use these rocks to make an endless amount of electricity with the solar panel and the hydrogen fuel cells and the oxyhydrogen flame. Depending on what rock you pick up off the ground, I noticed very quickly that this one gave off a huge bright candle luminescent reaction when I picked it up. So I was like, well that's a good candidate for, you know, capturing photons and making electrons using a solar panel. So that's the whole basis of the pulsar reactor. So you just go outside. Platinum works best, but you could use any rock. They all act different. Like this one seemed to work really well. Different rocks. Endless amount of electrical power. Because you just set that little rock right here on this cradle and it turns into a star. So the pulsar works off a low energy nuclear reaction. So you go outside and you shop around for rocks. Make sure you get one that's going to give you that candle luminescent reaction. Or just use a piece of platinum. Okay, so here's the actual builder folder. Just the device. If you come in here in the builder's folder, let me go through it real quick. See, there's your solar panel. I used two of those, I put them on the inside. I've updated it now where I'm using these. They collect the electricity a little differently. The solar panel's on the back. So once you have some solar panels where your wires are hooked up, then you have your solar starlight collector. So you collect your starlight with your solar panels. You're going to need a globe, a dome like this, plastic globe, dome. You can get them from street lights. There's a couple of different ways to get them. There's the riser with the cradle that holds the platinum. It's similar to a limelight of the past. I just had the genius to put solar panels on it in a globe and call it a pulsar reactor. I mean, we got to come up with something, you know. So there you go. This thing works really well. I'm just going to clip and edit all this together for you. So it comes out to be quite a bit of power. And these are uh, the LEDs I have. I'm going to go ahead and put the globe on there and show you how I'm making electricity and water and everything simultaneously. You'll be able to do all this at once. So let's go ahead and put the globe on there and we'll light up the LEDs. Okay. Just give me one second here. Go ahead and put the globe on top so you guys can see the LEDs come on. Okay? Let's start it back up. Okay, here we go. And what's cool about this? Okay, see I'm generating power on both sides. I'm going to start making water now. This whole globe's going to fill up and I'm going to put the light into a greater intensity and get the star going. Here it goes. Okay, once you get it going, that's it. It's on its own. So now I'm generating electrical power and I'm creating water and light and heat and electricity all at once. You see, I've got these wires hanging off the side here. They go up to the solar panels. And this is how you pull power off of the star, okay? Use these little plugs. If you come over here to the LEDs, we're gonna just plug it in. And that's how I pull power by having solar panels on the inside. 
where the star is at, okay? This is how you pull power from the pulsar. And you can increase the intensity if you want. But I just made it where it gives me enough power, okay? I wanted to run my lights and make fresh water. So that's how I'm doing it, guys. But if you come over here, you'll see that it just releases fresh water. This is the only byproduct of the reactor. It's fresh water. Okay? That's how it all works, guys. It's like bringing the star into your kitchen. The only byproduct of the Pulsar solar nuclear reactor is fresh, clean drinking water. Think about that. It's wonderful. Okay? So it makes useful amounts of light, water filtration, heat, electricity, and gas. And it's all from solar sunlight. It's just uh, water and electricity. This generator has no moving parts. It has no bearings, no drive shaft. There's no parts to wear out. There's no contact brushes, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, think about that now. Uh, it can work in space and underwater. And it all runs on sunlight and wind. And you can reverse the, the pollution using this device. That's what's so great about it. So it's important to understand the symbol for resistance. If you're into electricity and you're into electrolysis, the ohm symbol is one of the most important symbols you're ever going to run into. It has a lot to do with resistance and the water's resistance and the electrical resistance. You need to learn a little bit about pyramids. This is a book I have. We'll get into this later. I mean, the images of stars and hydrogen fuel cells and people collecting sunlight and holding water is just undeniable. It's everywhere you look. And these are electrical symbols. Symbols for the ohms. See? You're going to see tons of electrical symbols. People carrying reactors. Look, there's some water fuel cells. People working on them. There's some guy with his dry cell. I mean, look at this stuff. It's easy to see. You can't miss this stuff. You have to be blind to miss it. Look at their feet. See in their feet? See the reactor on board the ship? See the water? You're, they're traveling on water. You have to travel with water. You're made of water. So when I'm out in the yard shopping for rocks, certain rocks act different than other rocks. I'll go ahead and light this flame here real quick. See, check out this rock. It, it makes light really good. I noticed that immediately when I picked it up. So every rock is going to act different. Some of them are going to shatter. You know, some rocks will fall apart. Okay? 
So I've got the power supply, the generator, and then the bubbler right next to it. But think about that, you know? Depending on what rock you get, the way it's going to act when you introduce it to the flame. So I want you to take a look in this folder here. I think a picture is worth a thousand words. There's the ohm symbol. You're going to see that a lot in these Egyptian depictions. There's the tetrahedron in the future. Let's take a look here at some of these uh, images. Well, wow, that looks familiar. And if you look in his hand, and you'll see the ohm symbol everywhere you go. And you'll see stars, lots of things like this. I just wanted to throw this in there. You know, people carrying reactors. Lots of things resembling water molecules, tetrahedrons. So you can see the ohm symbol in the bird's feet right there. And it has to do about resistance. If there was no resistance, you could just pull the water apart It'd be endless amounts of enormous power. It'd be too easy to do. So it really has a lot to do with resistance. That's what the electrolyte's for, to lower the resistance in the water. So once you to see some of this stuff, you know, people adding electrolyte, you're going to do that millions of times. See, there's the ohm symbol again. You know, you're not going to miss that symbol. It's used today. It's used for measuring resistance. See, hydrogen society, worshipping the sun. If you're wearing the sun on your head, you're worshipping hydrogen. You're going to see that everywhere. Sine wave. I mean, the picture's worth a thousand words. You know, people pulling apart the water molecule. I mean, what's that look like? Look. Seriously? See? You should pay attention and take a look at some of this stuff. So I hope this helps understand how the pulsar reactor works and how if you used wind and solar technology, rocks, oxyhydrogen and water for fuel, you can produce an endless amount of electrons by creating photons and then capturing those with solar panels. So it's not hard to do. There's the electrical schematic. This is what the reactor would look like. This would be the industrial version. So if you ever do make it to Mars, you're going to be able to make power systems that are unlike that you have here on earth see this would be a high efficiency gas production fuel cell array these are underground fuel cell generators So, Mars has uh, ice caps you can melt the ice caps and use the water over and over again and you're never going to run out because you don't consume any of the resources except for the element that does get consumed over time Depending on what you use, a piece of calcium oxide will never, will never corrode and it'll never fall apart. That's like an original limelight reactor. So I hope this helps you understand. There's gas driven electrical power generator. So you're sending the gas through this generator before you consume it. Before you use the gas, you're spinning a turbine and making electricity. This is electrolyte water storage tanks. You would have your DC power voltage amplifiers and your primary direct current from your solar power. And all that would go to your pulse width modulation system that would control your reactors. It's nothing more than a DC motor controller system. So I hope this helps in your understanding of the pulsar reactor.